PR Pro Cannabis Media. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to a very special edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. You know, this is a show that I get to talk to some really interesting people in the cannabis space. And when you go into trade shows or you go to conventions, you meet a lot of people. OK, you meet a lot of people who are just as passionate about the cannabis cause as you. Now, sometimes you meet smart, beautiful women at these conventions. And I might add that uh, it's great to surround yourself with people like that. And I have two of them on the show with me tonight for obvious reasons. One, of course, is a friend. No, doesn't need an introduction to pro cannabis media. Dr. Mary Clifton, always good to see you, Mary. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great, Jimmy. Thanks for having me back. You bet. And and then the, the reason why we're all together, and Tanya, I think, is going to explain this. This is Tanya Griffin. She's for, in Colorado, and she has these products that enhance uh, your sexual pleasure. Okay, that's really what it comes down to. And when <laughs> I asked her, you know, what your target audience is, she said, anybody who likes sex. So that was how I met Tanya. Right, Tanya? And then we sat down <laughs> and had to for 30 minutes. And how many, I think I blushed 10 times in that 30 minutes. I think that's what I, we it, That's may underestimate it, Jimmy. <laughs> we may be underestimating your, your redness. <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, there's a number of reasons why I'm glad that both of you are here. Because, Tanya, I want you to explain a little bit about your background and how you got into this and a little bit about, ooh, yes, dot love, right? <laughs> right. Right. OK, and then and then we can go to the doctor in the house, Dr. Mary, and talk to her about the uh, how the endocannabinoid system and the. Let me rephrase that. Let the doctor <laughs> tell. Let the doctor tell, before I make an absolute <laughs> yeah. fool of myself, you know, calling about dopamine and neurotransmitters like I really know what the freak I'm talking about. We all know I don't. OK, okay. So Tanya, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got to be where you are and how we got to this place. And then we'll get into a little bit about the name of the new show. Wonderful. I I, I always jokingly say that I, I went from, uh, Dr. Mary will understand this, from colostrum to cannabis to come. So my, my journey really started in 95, after the birth of my four, or, you know, my first son, soon to be four kids. I am a, a lactation consultant and I had stores throughout the US and in Europe where we helped women breastfeed, where Dr. Mary understands that one of those magical endorphins is prolactin, um, which is released when you're breastfeeding. I ended up uh, getting into the cannabis industry and building the first vertically integrated national cannabis franchise. So the idea of marrying uh, sex and cannabis uh, just it was a no-brainer. It came very easy, uh, Jimmy. That sort of pushed me forward now in my mid-50s, four kids raised and out of my house, so I get to have lots of sex. And yes, my, my goal in life is to help people have uh, certainly more and better sex. Right. Everybody deserves to pursue <laughs> happiness in their lives. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And 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 of course, the the next step of that is yeah. And and obviously, I'd like to enjoy sex with a partner that I enjoy being with. Or we could talk about sex without partners too. But let, let's talk with partners. Or or many partners, Jim. Oh, it's there nice. you go. Yeah, but, I mean, look, by the on. way, one of the first <laughs> questions Tanya asked me is, so would you like to do a video or would you like to do a threesome? What would be the best thing? <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> I don't think about that, you know. That, that wasn't his first blush. No, that wasn't. <laughs> <By the> way, <laughs> you know, was children only one really, and people in your home, people underestimate how much that impacts your individual sexuality. But when you have, well, absolutely. you know, people in the home, they, as, when they're little, they're getting up really early in the morning. They may go to bed on time, but they get up really early. So the morning is all filled with taking care of other people and not really managing your own needs. And then in the evening, you know, they, they may go to bed early, but then the whole thing shifts when they're teenagers, right? And they're 
you know, they get up just long and then spend 40 minutes in the shower and then disappear. So they're relatively <laughs> not present in the morning, but in the evening, you know, they're in and out, they're unpredictable. They, you know, they, they don't necessarily like to be tied down and, and know exactly when they're coming home. So it gets in the way of just being able to relax with a partner because, you know, you just never, you don't want to be put in a situation where you're, you know, imprinting something you don't want to imprint on somebody who's too young you know sure. so it does so it does make uh the i mean people always think that young beautiful people in their 20s and 30s are having a lot of sex they're just having a lot of sex because look how gorgeous they are but actually you know when you look at the uh, studies nobody in their 30s is having any sex because because everybody is working and taking care of the children and holding a grudge. And it's, 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 you know, there's just not a lot of really real intimacy in that, in that decade. Yeah. yeah I, Doc, I have to agree with you. And it leads to the point where you have to carve out time. Like you have to make a place for it and, and you can move that, you know, relationship, that sexual relationship from routine to more, ritual in a, in a very, a very positive way. And, you know, whether it's kids or animals or walking the dog, or just your really probably the most devastating is your own mindset, you know, yes. where, where it's not a priority. I, you know, if you're thinking about sex all day and that is your focus, um, one, I guess that can be quite distracting, but that's going to get you into that place where you want to do it more. And like anything in life, uh, the more you practice, you know, the, the easier and it gets and the more you want to do it. Listen, when you're raising those young kids, you and I have both done that. Not only is it, it distracting, but you're, you know, you're tired. Everything gets in your way. Like it took me two marriages to get through fucking awesome sex, you know, <laughs> where you're just daily, twice a day, where that is your focus. And you and I, you know, we're now... Um, I think we're relatively the same age. This is this is the new 30s, right? So now is the time where we get to, you too, Jimmy, you too, where we get to have lots of sex, right? We've, yeah, we've I mean, created I think a space for ourselves. I think there's plenty of time to do whatever you want to do in your 50s and you think things are going to be in, you know, like there's like what what's happening when you're in your 50s, when you're in your 20s or 30s, you're like, I mean, what am I going to be doing when I'm 50? But then when, right. you, when exactly. you're in your 50s, you're like, dang, it's so much fun. It's like being in high school, again, in terms of your level of responsibility, you know, and then um, and, and just over, I mean, after all of that responsibility has moved on with raising the kids. So you're back in high school, except you have a little extra money and a passport. <laughs> and some wisdom. Like you have a little wisdom that you bring to the table. And I think you have a voice too, you know, you, yes. where you can say what you want. I mean, you, you, you're, you're so fledgling as you, you navigate through teenage years and the twenties and the thirties. And I would say even the forties, you, you've got the baggage of children. Yeah. And once you can release and you have that. the body image issues that you oh, yeah. tend to have where they feel so un, they feel so just sorry, my dog has a little cough where we I just put him on some antibiotics. So if you hear some sort of hacking and gagging in the background, that's my dog. That's that's why Zoom calls are so much fun. And and uh, and Tony, you, you said something about thinking about sex. I think the number, I'm not quite sure what the number was, but do you remember when Harry met Sally and Billy Crystal says, yes. guys think about sex 200, 400 times a day? I believe that. Well, so do women. Listen, we have it very good. We have multiple orgasms. We're thinking about sex just as much. Really? You know, I think we only study. Are you now? Are you? Now? Absolutely. I, I, I know. Well, I know I, you are. I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I can't make it through a yoga class without fantasizing. I mean, yeah, I think we as human beings think of sex. I, 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 and again, I, it lends me to the, the, the beginning of our conversation. Like the more you ritualize or put sex as part of your routine, I, I think the more you will indulge and it's a good thing. I mean, I think you're going to bring us to talking about, you know, the release of dopamine and endorphins and what that does. And, you know, really what an orgasm. And of course, Dr. Mary is going to be going to talk to this, but what an orgasm does to you physically, 
from the release of you know oxytocin and prolactin and 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 raging dopamine through your system. I mean, look at the drugs we do to get to that space. Before before we get into the chemistry <laughs> class, okay. Um, I just want to tell me, please, please enlighten me, my two beautiful friends. Okay, smart, beautiful <laughs> friends. Um, not all women can orgasm. Correct. I mean, it's actually not the majority. Am I right? Doc, I'm going to let you go first. Here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you for that. You know, I, I, I think that probably there's, I, I, there's probably some women who have more difficulty reaching yeah. orgasm and, uh, and uh, maintaining lubrication. But, you know, I just, uh, I, I don't want to consider anybody or anything as wrong or it's hard or that there's somehow an outlier or that there's there's an abnormality there there are just some people that you know want to have a really satisfying sexual experience once or twice a week and then other people who would be thinking about doing it you know two or three times a day or more when they're on vacation or if they if they can so it it's it's it, it and then the response is you know is variable and dependent on so many things i mean if you're on you know like medicines for your allergies or if you're taking blood pressure medicines or uh, you know, if you're dealing with any kind of heart condition, then things become really tricky uh, with with couples. So, it, you know, everybody's bringing a lot of challenges. And I will say there's a lot more time, but there's also, you know, considerably more arthritis in our age group and little, you know, little, pro little problems like, uh, like, like, you know, back pain or, or, or a stiff knee or something that everybody has to accommodate. So there's, you know, there's, there's challenges with everything every age group. All right. So I, I, if I could, add, I'm going to add to that. Go Jimmy, ahead. Go, if go I ahead. can, just, just because I'm I, going to lose think, control um, of this show very quickly. You, you've anyway. lost control, my friend. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I, I think we need to, you know, there's an argument to starting with ourselves. If you can, and, and of course, a good orgasm is really, you know, pretty heady. It starts in your head. So it's, it's around fantasy, but um, everyone should be masturbating. Like let's, if you, you've got you at least work toward getting it, getting there um, yourself, there are toys to do it. I personally, you know, you can't beat water. You can't beat the shower head. I like the original water pick myself. Throws hmm. down a lot of water, but I think we need to, I, I don't know, doc, if you agree with me, but I think it's a, it's back to that practice and, and, and putting your head in that space and, and finding, you know, uh, finding that relationship with your sexuality. And, and we all have things that are just pounding at us, whether it's the dogs or the kids or, you know, uh, medical conditions that, it, you know, persistent pain. Um, but if we, the one way I think that we can, we can forge through that is by um, starting with ourselves. Right. Um, I read you know, Cosmo. I read Cosmo back in the did day. Did you, Jimmy? <laughs> I did. I did. Back Especially when day. it was about sex, because I was interested in what goes through a woman's mind, you know, right. and how better to relate to them. And the individual, <laughs> let's not make it male or female, the individual, okay, has to figure out what arouses them Correct. first, and then communicate that to a partner in order to really enjoy the experience. Is that accurate, guys? I mean, it's pretty hard to be mind reading. You know, it's, it, I think that's uh, so much, but you know, there's that, uh, there's that joke that uh, when an Islamic <laughs> person gives up their life, you know, for the cause, they get 76 virgins or something when they go to <laughs> heaven. And then <laughs> the inside of the, of the funny card says, you know, I'll take one 50 year old woman. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your 76 virgins, <laughs> which is really, I mean, you really do have to talk to your partner and tell them what, what you're thinking or what you want more of or less of. And then people are astonishingly 
you know, uh, really reliable in delivering, or that maybe they're not, they may say this is, you know, I'm super, super good at this. And I know you're really going to love it, even if you don't think you love it with other people. Well, you know, it probably that is not going to happen. It, but some people just really have a particular skill they want to bring to the table so that yeah. Yeah, that's fine. We can, you know, so you, you always want to be a little experimental too. And just, you know, give, give the, it, but plenty of communication is really going to be key to all of this. There's there's just so many little funny details all through life uh, to enjoy and, and be it's it's such an important part of the intimacy to really share what that person is thinking or, you know, what music they'd like to listen to, what kind of, you know, what kind of um, what kind of fun they like to have, it, you know, because I, 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 I always joke around that it's a private party, that I'm having a private party tonight, or, you know, or I bought that to wear to the private party. And then that's, uh, <laughs> so, so that's how I communicate around it. And, you know, then, then you can talk a little bit about costuming and what the drink is going to be and stuff. And it's, uh, you know, and then it just elevates the whole experience to just a, a really special party for two. Yeah. So or three or, guys or, or three, three. Or, <laughs> yeah i mean that's i i've been, uh, all of that is really interesting and fun for a lot of people. by the way this is the closest i've come to a menage a trois i just want to <laughs> yeah, say <it's> <laughs> How many miles apart are we? 500, 700, 800, whatever, whatever it is. Um, Tanya, tell us a little bit about you and I have been going back and forth about the name of the show that you'd like to uh, introduce to our audience at Pro Cannabis Media. And you, you opted out of one, which is fine. Tell us about the one that you have picked and why and what, what we can look forward to that. Yes. Yeah, so, so the name that, that really touches my heart is yes to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Now we, we, <laughs> we, we rewrote that to weed. So we, we sort of um, took away some of the, the psychedelics and the MDMA that I am so fond of. Um, but I, I think, you know, I, the brand that I built, uh, oh yes, that you mentioned earlier, really centers around that 60s, 70s sexual revolution and ties inextricably to rock and roll. And, and obviously some of my heroes, whether that is Mick Jagger or Keith Richard or Paul McCartney, um, have had their ride with drugs, um, survived it. All of my friends there have survived it and have leaned into that sexual revolution. And I think we are you know, decades ebb and flow and they, they change, but I am hoping um, that we are coming back into a space where we are open in our communication about sex. We are somewhat free about sex. Certainly, uh, you know, my children are between the ages of 21 and, and 28. And those generations are so different than when the three of us were, gro were growing up. You know, it's so fluid. You can have sex with girls and boys and multiple people. But to, to Dr. Mary's point, we're having less sex than we ever had. And I think, you know, what was really behind um, me creating Oh Yes and really wanting to do this Yes to Sex podcast is really about our previous conversation, which is about opening communication around sex. I think it's very important, you know, to that end, I, I built a sex quiz, believe it or not, the Oh Yes Sex Quiz, where there's, you know, you have about a hundred different sex acts where you get to all discreetly and all through your phone say, oh yes, oh no, oh maybe so. And then you're able to share that with your partner or partners and we'll share what you're willing to do together. But the whole point of a podcast or bringing props into the bedroom or, you know, anywhere where you're having sex or opening that communication, it's really the focus to me is not about products. It's about showing up, you know, obviously staying present and, and opening that communication. So whether that's the ability to ask for what you want or to explore something that you are, Jimmy, fantasizing about, this particular 5,000 mile threesome, <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> 
But you know, it's really it's important. Yeah. It's a, a, I love all those points you made, but you said, you know, it's not really about product, but at the same time, it is really about product. I mean, you need to make sure that you have what you need and that you, you have, uh, you have good tools to, uh, you know, to, to do everything that you need to do. And I mean, really great lubricant is super important. I mean, I told patients for years that Astroglide is the best lubricant on the market. Yeah. And that's true. It is the slipperiest, but it's like, <laughs> you know, silicone plastic beat that you're all up inside very close to a lot of very important organs. So I don't, you know, I, I'm sorry that I gave people that advice. And, um, and now, you know, I, I, I tell people to use like an organic avocado oil or a really good, um, you know, lubricant. So I'm glad you've got these products that can help people. Yeah. And she's well, not, I don't... you're not the yes. only one, but I, I do, I, I want to, Bring in the male factor here, guys. Okay, <laughs> that's my role in this. Um, for years, men like to pleasure their partners, just like women like to pleasure their partners. Okay, but as you get older and you go through menopause, the postmenopausal sexual experience can turn painful. So, what was right. pleasurable has now become painful, and that probably has more to do with less practice than anything else, because we're talking about muscles here. But my, my point is, how important is it that the guy understands when to say no, when, when, when the partner says no, it means no, or that hurts, move on to another body part. That's really what it comes down to. Again, it goes back to that communication between two people. I think it is the communication, Jimmy, but I'm going to go back to Dr. Mary's point, which is stash some lube in your purse. It goes a long way. So we as post, you know, menopausal women in that world, we are definitely a little less lubricated than our, our 20 year old counterparts. They, they, they are, they have more moisture than we do. So instead of moving on from that space, Jimmy, if you break out the lube and maybe, you know, there, there are various kinds of lubes that the Astro guide that Dr. Mary mentioned the silicone lube just gets the job done. She's right. Like, like if you want to get over that hump, that is probably the way to do it. But, you know, there are lubes made of olive oil, you know, just coconut oil, which we do, or propendile, which is more of a water-based lube. But I, I think um, always listen to your partner. Part of your conversation was listen to when she says no, I, I would... That is that goes without saying, and you always move on if she says no. But as you open communication and explore things together, I think um, speaking from experience, you can get beyond some of that pain by using the tools that Mary is talking about. Yeah, it's and of course practice always <laughs> muscle kidney and its uterine ligaments. You know, there's the uterus is sort of suspended in the in the base of the abdomen by some ligaments that you know um, that sometimes after a heavy pounding can be really cranky. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. If you're, but it is, and then the, the, the cramps that happen after an experience like that are probably the uterine ligaments that have gotten, you know, a bit uh, pulled and tugged. But the, uh, but the, the tissue, um, you know, in the vulva and in the vagina can get, as you get older, can get more collagen deposition, and it'll get stiffer and and uh, and shrink a bit. And in some ways that's good because it, it, those women don't tend to have much urinary incontinence as they get older, but it does really get in the way of being able to, um, you know, the tissues just don't really relax. So you may have a, a woman who's very receptive and would love to, you know, to have uh, a penetration, but there, but the, the, the area has just gotten so um, narrow. And there's, I mean, there's all, there's all kinds of stories and all kinds of crazy case uh, reports in the literature of women who didn't have a conversation and they hadn't had sex for a long time. They had a lot of collagen deposition postmenopausally and they have some real bad outcomes. So, and they have like a, a series of dilators you can do, but that's a difficult problem when that starts to happen. That's really challenging. And it's sort of a use it or lose it uh, phenomenon. There really isn't much to like make it not happen other than just to continue to uh, be sexually active and keep things as healthy as possible, you know? Well, I would argue that even in the midst of a good pounding, 
keeping that lubricant by your side goes a long way because just the right thought, the friction alone can take you down yeah, as we get yeah. a little older. So keep it travel size, keep it by your bed. Um, do you guys design all mine so you can palm in them your, in your product yes. line? Oh, everything I did was travel size. So you can put in your hand, it's nice. discreet and you can get at it quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I got to take a look at this line. I oh, you know, I, I am sending you so many toys well, I, and I, the handcuffs. I'm sending you handcuffs too, like BDSM. Yes. Absolutely. Well, good. Now I'll have a pair to give away. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I've totally lost control here. <laughs> <laughs> which is fun, which is fun because I, I think when you have two mature people talking about these things openly, it does tend to um, normalize the experience. And one thing I learned, and I think, I think it was Tanya who said this, the brain is really the sex organ here. Right. That's what I learned in my little sex class at, at Tufts University back in 1979. <laughs> Don't ask me the grade I got, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the, po the point is that, and, and everything else is your musculoskeletal system, right? But what impact does being high have on your sexual experience? Oh, yeah. And this is a cannabis show. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. I know we it's digress. not just a sex show. I brought it back yes. to the cannabis thing. So, Dr. Mary, I'm yes. going to start with you. And then <laughs> yes. Tanya will go on for hours on this subject. Yeah, but, but uh, definitely. What, how does it enhance? Because I've read all this stuff. You know, it wasn't even in Cosmo. One of these was in the New York <laughs> Times about, you know, is uh, here's what the science says. You yeah. know, does uh, cannabis alter your sexual experience positively or negatively? And of course, mm -hmm. this plant, as we all know, impacts everybody differently. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. add in that challenge too. And different plants right. impact people differently. So right. yeah. And I've got that too. I've got the best weed thing. strains for sex. We're gonna we're gonna go over <laughs> that a little bit too. Yeah, um, I mean, but those are a lot of fun to pick out. I have walk, a bunch walk of me walk me product. through what the body goes through when. First of all, you have a few hits of a, of a joint or you take a dab or a bong hit or whatever, whatever titration floats your boat. OK, I'm now <laughs> doing under the tongue things. Um, oh. It works. <laughs> it works. It, it does. It does. And it leads to a very intense relaxation and, and calm and uh, and a nice flow, a rush of, of heavy, uh, you know, beautiful emotions. And that's uh, that's usually a, it's a result of, uh, of feel good hormones being released in your brain, you know, serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, just uh, helping you to relax and sort of feel more in the flow. I mean, there are different, different drugs work different ways and drugs like cocaine and alcohol, like uh, elevate your ego and make you think that you're stronger, smarter, faster, and, and, you know, sort of make you they don't really bring you into community, but uh, cannabis is one drug that uh, that gives you more of a sense of being of being in a community or with other people. So interestingly, the studies show that if you are uh, uh, using, it's more of an ego destroying drug, like uh, like like mushrooms. It's uh, you know it's 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 not ego elevating, and so you can really like communicate with somebody or have intimacy. So the studies show that even if one partner, just one partner uses cannabis, not even both partners, they both will say that the experience was better. More girls have orgasms when they're, when they're using a uh, weed and people describe just a higher level of satisfaction with their, with their sexuality in general. So also can potentially help men who have issues with uh, uh, premature ejaculation with PE, you know, again, with just helping to really bring that relaxation forward. So it's, it appears to be by some small studies, uh, a powerful new tool for helping people uh, who want to have uh, improvement in their sexuality. I, and Dr. Mary, I think it's particularly, there was a, I recently wrote an article and, and, referenced a 2019 study that really looked for, you know, cause we don't study women nearly enough as you know, but really looked at women. And um, we particularly have an increase in our libidos when using cannabis. And of course, if we look back, you know, decades back, certainly even in the 1930s when, when we 
demonized uh, uh, cannabis, you know, lock up your white women, you know, they're just going to be sexual freaks if you get them near this plant. Well, uh, hopefully that is the case, by the way. So I, I think we've learned, I like, we've learned some lessons around what cannabis does, like we, what we do know, I mean, all of us use cannabis, I think at this table, and, and we know that it has an element of freeing your mind and, and opening community and, and letting your ego sort of, as you mentioned, contrary to cocaine or alcohol, letting your ego somewhat step aside. And we know that that's very important to sex, right? So if you just suddenly relax and stay in your body and, and allow that presence to happen, you know, to allow you to stay present, that's very important to female sexuality and, and getting in that space. Um, and I, I think if we, if we, not that we should ever lean on any drug as a crutch, but we can learn from drugs, you know, whether that is, you know, uh, LSD or, or MDMA, Molly, or, or absolutely cannabis. We learn certain, your ketamine clinics, you know, just even those kinds of things. We start to learn things about how our mind can open and how we can stay present in that moment. And that is what sex is about in my opinion. <laughs> I think it is too. I mean, you know, there's not a lot of things and I think it differs for everybody where you can right. really get into the now and be very much present in this exact moment and not be thinking about what's uh, what you're going to do after the podcast or what you didn't complete before, or, you know, you're all, you're, you always have something else, some other tape rolling. So it is yes. really nice to figure out a way to just get everything else off the table and completely be in that present moment. I think you can do that with sex. You can probably do that with a very deep, like spiritual prayer experience. I think sometimes on super long runs or in a hot Bikram yes. yoga class where I'm like totally absorbed in the <laughs> exercise, I've gotten completely, you know, everything else erased, but that is, uh, that's a really tricky thing to, for most people to be able to do. And uh, absolutely, it, it, yeah. Yes. And if you can use cannabis as an aid to help sex really become something like almost spiritual, I mean, I would say almost spiritual, but I actually think that sex was given to us by God so that we would actually just see just a tiny glimpse <laughs> of heaven. If you're not an atheist, I'm kind of 50% atheist, except I just can't completely go. God, I love that. You, you, yeah, you're you're dabbing in and out. You're, I'm, I'm thinking you're about roll it, the but, dice but, but I still, all of that imaging is really powerful from my childhood. So yeah, I've, I've always thought that there's True. just, there's just there's nothing better than when you're completely a hundred percent in the moment. And that's fun to do when you're, when you're right. Ready. No, I, I I think that is so true. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that concept of practice and communication. And 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 we we are talking about drugs here. And 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 however controversial that is, we're talking about you know cannabis and how we incorporate that into our lives in a healthy way. You know, mm -hmm. so that does that means that you you know of course if we you know you take too much of that edible, sex is no fun. So it's it's often around understanding, you know, where you're at in yourself. Obviously, I'm a huge proponent of, um, not obviously, but I'll tell you, I'm a big proponent of microdosing, you know, whether that is cannabis or, you know, some of the psychedelic drugs, you know, if we, if we have a relationship with those substances that is healthy and, and mm -hmm. lets us learn from them, um, we can incorporate that into other things that we do. So whether you're practicing your big room yoga, to get mindfulness and taking that back into the bedroom. Or when you smoke a joint, you realize that the, the clutter and the noise in your head around having to do the dishes and then not being able to focus, teaching ourselves to get better at that mindfulness and staying present is going to make sex great. And if you keep having those rolling, awesome orgasms, you're going to get the dopamine and the prolactin and all of those endorphins that Dr. Mary is going to share with us. You know, <laughs> it's, so, sure. it's so funny that, you know, I mean, sex is great, right? Isn't sex so yeah. much fun? But then yes. people forever have been trying to have more fun, like, you know, oysters, right. 
you hear about right. all, all kinds of aphrodisiacs and then and, and plenty of people have a couple of beers or they'll have a nightcap before they go to bed and they'll pour themselves a stiff glass of whiskey i've never understood a nightcap and then i got to be <laughs> and i was like oh i see oh. i see so <laughs> it's trying to relax i guess so it's, right. it's, it's so it's the same thing with cannabis and probably better because cannabis does have that ego destroying uh you know so you're yes. so really bringing yourself into a relationship instead of, you know, being, uh, th thinking of a more, of yourself in a more elevated way and not really thinking about being in community with your partner. So I think you can place different drugs in different places if you're trying to use them to enhance a recreational experience, you know? And uh, I mean, I, it's, it's really hard to put any situation where you would say it's better to drink alcohol there than use cannabis. I mean, the toxicity I agree. of alcohol and the, you know, and the other problem is you're half masked the next day. And I mean, right. I don't want to right. be half masked the next day. I've got a lot going on and I don't, <laughs> I don't, I feel like the weeks already fly by. I don't want to waste a whole day feeling terrible. So, you know, always using cannabis when you're trying to relax is, uh, is so much, is so superior to alcohol. Just yeah, start, I totally agree with you. Right. Right. Like the mantra is start low and go slow. Especially yeah. right, I agree, Jimmy. Yeah, right, and and even 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 to this day, someone that may be experienced over many many <laughs> decades. Okay, I try to hold <laughs> off until my chronic pain becomes so bad that I need something to take the edge off, and that's how right. I've used this stuff forever. And Steve D'Angelo talks about the same thing in, in the Cannabis Manifesto. You know, it may not get rid of your pain but it'll help your mind deal with that pain so much better. And of course, if you're in pain, you really don't want to have sex. I just want to say, you, you just right. don't, if it hurts, right. you don't want to do it, right? Yeah, so. right. Hey, listen, hey, um, pain control is really important. And that was one of the points on one of the articles you sent was really, you know, thinking about making sure that there's a, there's no pain issues, if there's hip problems or right. any limitations and who doesn't have an orthopedic limitation or two after you get, right. I swear, I mean, I'm yeah. really five. sleepy one, or one injury. or two or five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I do, I do want to go through this list. Uh, I'm going to do it fast. We'll do it. We'll do it rapid fire, okay? And okay. I'll, I'll say this is what this this is uh, from best weed strains for sex, okay? It's an article, mm -hmm. I believe it came out in 2019. A study was done in 2019, and they've laid out some of the weed strains to try for different types of sexual experiences and needs more libido. So they they suggest wedding cake and dosy -si dose. Now I've had wedding cake. Does that? Have you guys did had you, did you have this? sex that night? You think I remember? I can't remember yeah. what I did yesterday. <laughs> I did not have sex yesterday. I remember one that. of my patients <laughs> always says his favorite strain is wedding cake because he had it the night that he the night he was married. And it, oh, was, it really added to the romance. That's that's, that's awesome. <laughs> cute, <isn't> um, <laughs> so here we go to ease anxiety. This is quite the lineup. Uh, Bubba Kush. Kosher Kush, Skywalker OG Kush. Who is this guy Kush, by the way? Anyway, and Blueberry <laughs> Lamb's Bread. Never heard yeah. of that one. But the other two out of the four there, I definitely have tasted that. And mm -hmm. did it ease my anxiety? Yeah, sure it did. I don't know. <laughs> but did it get me high? You know, to me, it's like, did that work? Did that get me high? Get my high? All right. Um, any of those cushions ring a bell with either one of you two, as far as anxiety goes? You know, it's funny. I mean, when I'm uh, when I'm working with patients, and I think a lot of the dosing calendars are going to say similarly that everybody has their personal preference. I mean, there's some great recommendations out there, but the best thing to do is really, you know, get a product that works for you and use it. You know. Because we don't have that much data that if the CBD is less than 1% or greater than 3%, that it's going to have like a remarkably different impact. And we know for sure that that's the cannabis that you should be using to enhance your sex. You should, you know, just work with different products and see which one works. And if you have one that you like, you know, there's no reason to shake that up if it's working for you, unless you just want to experiment and have fun. Yeah, now, I, so I agree with Dr. Mary, and I, I think we have to not forget 
things like, uh, you know, the terpenes that are in there. And that what you said, Jimmy, which is that you've got to kind of learn your own body. We build up a resistance to THC over time. So we're, we're constantly sort of needing more to get to that same high. And to Dr. Mary's point, finding something that gave you a good experience previously, jumping away from that and thinking there's a magic bullet in wedding cake, I, I think could be disappointing. Right. You know, exactly. I think I don't think there's right. not it's not a one size fits all. Correct. This. You know, 100%. where I thought we, we saw that more than anything was in the sleep research. You know, they were right. they were collecting data on sleep and trying to they they figured it was going to be an indica, you know, that was high in 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 uh, what's I, all of a sudden I'm blanking on the on the uh, terpene that comes from like limonene. Lime. Uh well limonene is pretty clarifying and uh, cumuline? Cumuline? Well, in any case, um, it, what, what it turned out was that half of the people that are using uh, cannabis for sleep are using a, a, a sativa or what's considered a more stimulating right. strain. So everybody's brain is, is a little different. And, uh, right. and, and when we keep yeah. thinking we're going to dial it into a particular product for a particular problem, and that, that probably isn't going to be the way it's going to settle out. Yeah. <laughs> so terpene yeah. steer... Terpenes steer the THC and CBD and the other cannabinoids in the plant. And I got to tell you, you know, as someone who kind of prides himself as being a you know a sportscaster and teaches young people how to speak properly, pronouncing <laughs> the terpenes is one of the most challenging freaking things I've ever seen. Mercine I can handle. Humulene I can handle. Beta cariofoline. <laughs> beta caryophyllin there you that's go from, that's yeah. from uh black pepper you know that kind of a very so let me, spicy, so, very powerful that's a very powerful uh, again terpene. with the black pepper i remember when i first did these podcasts and i was asking all these doctors about what do you do when you get too high yeah. and you know you have that wives tale well you chew black peppercorns i'm like i am not chewing black peppercorns i don't know why i am <laughs> yeah, that would really give me a lot of heartburn or something. I yeah. can't imagine chewing a peppercorn. No, I always tell people to make a pesto because then you're like chopping up basil and squeezing lemons and and putting the and by the time you get it done, you won't be <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You've, you've waited it out. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Yeah, what do you think about the timing of administration? Uh, you know, for a for a for for having really great great sex with cannabis. Do you think that it's, you know, it, it, it's something it's nice to have in place. Like if you're going to go out and have a drink, if you're going to have a drink before, or if you're just going to be hanging around talking and sharing about your day. That's a great, nice that's a great question. Uh, I think we have to remember that we're, 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 we're dosing it in different formats. So you can yeah. smoke it, which comes on very quickly and edible, you know, can have a lead time of, you know, I'd be as much as an hour, probably 30 to 45 minutes. But mm -hmm. we forget that when we're for, especially for women, when we're leaning on more lubes, that our, our vaginal area is just a wide open mucous membrane, like your mouth. So you can, you know, you can sort of um, take you there. Like, you know, I have an oral sex elixir that is all edible. It's, it's flavored with limonene, with terpenes, and you can lick it off of each other. But um, I, I think if we, we don't overdose any of these things, so don't start dabbing when you're not used to dabbing, don't take too much, mm -hmm. but there's a place for, you know, maybe the edible, you know, leading up before, you know, dinner, I would argue have sex before dinner, sex after dinner. I mean, sex before dinner is so good because then you're super hungry. So take an edible fuck the shit out of each other. That's awesome. You can lose some lubes and then do that after sex, you know, joint and maybe go for round two. That would be my advice. Yeah, and the other <laughs> advice I think we need to really remember, really be serious about and remember is that if yeah. you're using a consent tool, uh, like the one that Tanya has put together or whatever consent tool you choose, but you, but get, make sure you have a consent tool and you have a conversation with yes. the person that you're with, you know, consent is really complex, but all it boils down to is ask for what you want. 
make sure that you that you get great right. but you right. can't ask for what you want from somebody who has just taken a dab and and is mm -hmm. and does isn't used to dabs and is really really loopy and then you're yeah asking them if it's okay they they're i mean you're at that point talking to somebody who's you know, uh, decision making capacities are at like high elementary school. It's not it's not fair to ask them to make complex decisions about their sexuality at that point. So so well, sure said. That, yeah. So I, I think it's a really good idea, like you said, to just talk, but talk, be, talk when everybody's sober. And because uh, we are talking about incorporating mind altering substances into this relationship. And, and wow, to Dr. Mary's point, that requires good communication. It really, really does. Mm -hmm. Especially with mm -hmm. newbies, you know, in the mix who are um, with a first partner or have not done this before. I, I think that we um, need to learn how to communicate as best we can. And that is, we talked about it earlier and, mm -hmm. and we sort of rode over it a little bit. It's very difficult to communicate with another person. It's very difficult to ask for what yeah, you want. It even takes the people practice. that have been in your lives for years. Okay. That's right. right? It's hard. Right. Yes. And I get it. Hey, listen, th this has been great. I feel like I just, you know, I need to have a cigarette, right? I need to relax. You go a little. for it, Jimmy. No, I'm not going to have a cigarette. <laughs> the, point, the point is, the point is, this was stimulating conversation, okay, right. amongst two wonderful people that I've met over the years in the cannabis space. And Tanya, I'm <laughs> so looking forward to seeing who you bring on to your show to talk to about these issues. We were lucky that we have, a, you know, a great well, relationship with Dr. Mary, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, which was great, but I definitely think, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what else you might come up with as far as guests go and, and perhaps, you know, the chat rooms, because if we decide to do them live, this is where the chat room is going to go off. Absolutely. The charts, right. And I just want everyone to know we are, absolutely going to have some fun with this. So we are going to be open in our communication, not only about sex and drugs, but, you know, just incorporating the vibe of uh, the 60s and 70s film and music and how that drives our fantasy and um, where we're headed. That's um, right. All of us Terrific. young people. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, dot love, right? Oh, oh yes. Y -E -S dot love, right? <laughs> That's two O's for orgasm. I, I remember. I, oh, I oh, love oh, how yeah. you say that. I just I could just keep saying that word over and over again. Um, Orgasm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Dr. Mary, um, how can people get to you? I know how to do it, but why don't you tell us how we can get to Dr. Mary in New York? Well, the best place to find me is on TikTok. That's where I'm putting out all of my most recent content. And uh, I'm still having a blast there. And then I, I, I'm uh, working on some uh, additional products, setting up a ketamine clinic and expanding my uh, cannabis card. So keep an eye out for me in your state. Uh, and uh, and I'll, uh, you know, make sure to let everybody know on TikTok as I add those in. There you go. Yes. So, so for uh, Dr. Mary Clifton and, and Tanya Griffin, uh, thank you both for joining me, hanging out and talking. I can't <laughs> wait for the beginning of Tanya's show. I think it's going to be one of our most popular shows. I can't wait to see what goes on in the chat room, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? It's going to be fun. Yeah. So, so be for both, for Dr. Mary and for Tanya, I'm Jimmy Young, the host of In the Weeds. And don't forget, people, please, okay? Like, share, subscribe. And remember, it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. Educate yourself. As a broker, we have access to many, many cannabis carriers. So I will go in with two or three uh, quotes for people. The quotes might be 20,000 for one, 22,000 for another, 17,500 for another. Pretty close among the three. What I tell people is it's not the pricing, it's what's included and not included, meaning exclusions. An exclusion in layman's terms is just something that's not included. It's not on the menu. So it's just not included. But if you don't know that, if no one shows you that on page 71 of a 150 page policy, you're not going to know. No one knows. I never met one person that says they'd read an insurance policy. If you do, you know, I got some property in Florida for you.
Weed Talk and In the Weeds are two productions of pro-cannabis media supported by Revolutionary Clinics, one of the top medical cannabis dispensaries in the Massachusetts area, now with three locations in Greater Boston, two in Cambridge, and one on Broadway in Somerville. Rev Clinics has a patient-first mission. They will customize your needs as a medical patient with the proper titration and combination of strains, flavors, and products. Rev Clinics, where the patient comes first. Hey, you want to grow your own plants? Check out Style Lighting's Grow Kit. It has everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high-powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The Grow Kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information. Pro Cannabis Media Programming is available live and on demand on our Facebook page at Pro Cannabis Media, on Instagram at Pro Cannabis Media, on LinkedIn also at Pro Cannabis Media, on YouTube and YouTube Live on Pro Cannabis Media, Twitter at Pro Canna Media, and on twitch.tv backslash Pro Cannabis Media. So like, share, and subscribe to all of our content, newsletters, and shows live or on demand. We are Pro Cannabis Media.